from the Temple City Star. And so welcome to our regular council meeting uh, of the 11th of uh, September. And uh, we'd like to begin with uh, an opening prayer. Councillor Dow, if you would do that for us, please. Our Father in Heaven, regular council meeting of the town of Carson. We are grateful for the privilege we have of being here. Bless us in our deliberations that will be of one mind and of one heart. That will make decisions that will benefit the citizens of this town. May we be blessed by thy Holy Spirit as we meet together this evening. It is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Um, Item three, we will do additions, and then I'll call for adoption of the agenda. We have 6B to start with is uh, on, on the uh, agenda, an addition. 6B is in regards to the decision on the Fortis purchase offer of our electrical distribution system. So that's 6B. Going into number seven, uh, under the Council Committee, the whole recommendations, <coughs> item number five, uh, Roman numeral V, the uh, request from the Cards Number to West Stake for waiver of water from the pumping station. We have the other recommendations there. That one uh, is, is added. Right. Under 7D, we will add the uh, for the Orsk finance proposal. The that's the Old Man River Regional Services Commission O R R S C. Okay, and uh, I'm going to sneak in here seven E. It was going to be a letter that's in your package from Mr. Jasperson. Please remove that. I'm going to add in its place a late-breaking uh, development that uh, you'll see in just a moment. Um, so is the letter part of 70 or not? No, the letter is removed. What, so, so disregard that. It is in your package, uh, and it was okay, going to be 7E, uh, e, but that's going to be replaced with another uh, piece of correspondence. Let's go, pardon me? Another piece of correspondence referring to, sorry, we need to know what that E would be. Uh, referring to uh, a personnel matter. Okay. Now, number 11C is uh, some correspondence from AUMA. And 11D is a letter from our NLA, uh, Mr. Bickman. So, I will call for a motion to adopt the agenda with the additions. Moved by Councillor Court to adopt the agenda with the additions. I'll call that question all in favor. <coughs> Carries. Um, we have a delegation that we're expecting. Uh, he will be here in just a few minutes, Mr. Bagazi. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to adopt the minutes of the August 14 regular council meeting. Councillor Dow so moves. Any discussion on the motion to adopt the minutes? Okay, I'll call that question all in favor. Minutes are adopted. Um, let's get a couple of quick issues out of the way. Uh, the uh, 6A really probably should follow 4A, the delegation. So I'm going to go down to 6B. Uh, I would like to call from the council table uh, a motion regarding the offer by Fortis for the, the sale of our electrical distribution system, uh, their offer to purchase our distribution system, so moved by Councillor Smith. Which one? I am going to call for a recorded vote. Can we have the motion? And Mr. Uh, Councillor Smith will make the motion. Uh, I move that we, um, let's see here. I should have wrote it down, is what I should have done. I move that we 
do not. Uh, do not accept the uh, Fortis offer that was presented uh, to the count for $10 million and that we retain our electrical system, our distribution system. And you'll note that there's been a request for recorded vote. Any discussion on that motion? I will call a question. All in favor of the motion? <clears throat> Just to clarify if there's any needed. The offer by Fortis to purchase our distribution system is declined. And uh, you'll notice also that the motion is unanimous. <clears throat> uh, do 7 2. Oh, we got one there. Seven. I'm tempted to jump to 7E, okay? Um, what we've just received has to do with the Society of Local Government Managers of Alberta. Marion Carlson has complied with all the requirements of the Local Government Managers Regulation. And she has successfully completed Level 2 and is now a Certified Local Government Manager Level 2. So Marion, if you'd come forward for the presentation of this. She was wondering, what's the mayor pulling on her? <laughs> Uh, so, Marion, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Speech. Speech. All right. <laughs> and that is, uh, that is from the University of Alberta, if I understand correctly. And needless to say, that is quite an achievement. Marion, could you tell us a little bit? how many courses you had to take in order to have the certification? Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I believe I took in total 16 different courses. Um, the certification through the society, once you've completed the University of Alberta courses, then you have to apply to the society to be recognized. That process, you have to have two uh, peers give recommendations, and then they adjudicate that. So. Thank you. Is there correspondence courses? Uh, online, yes. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, we'd like to welcome uh, our delegation tonight. We're a couple of minutes early, but we can move forward with uh, former Mayor Bob Bogazi recently returned with uh, his lovely wife from uh, some service, uh, volunteer church service in Budapest. And so welcome, uh, Bob. And if you'd like to take the podium, uh, you have a presentation for us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. No sweat. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Council. It's good to be here. And uh, I don't think I've give a presentation to this council yet, have I? I think it was the previous council. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the bylaw number 1607, Storm Sewer Retention Pond, and how it relates to development in the West Area Structure Plan. Uh, going back, uh, I guess before this council, to the previous council, uh, my idea was coming back from Hungary. I was going to come back from Hungary, and when I got back, uh, subdivide my property, uh, sell off my house, and then use the money to build another house and also sell those lots, which I guess with seven homes there, the town would be getting probably somewhere around twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year in taxes. So that would be an investment that would go towards the town after the homes were built and the lots were sold off. So I, I got this uh, bylaw or this proposed bylaw when I was over in Hungary, and I think I replied to it uh, for the open meetings, and I'm sure that the letter was read at the open meetings. But if I look back to bylaw number 1590, uh, which was off-site development, this bylaw 1607 is charging us, uh, the, the uh, property owners, $8,511.60 per acre for storm sewer retention, but the storm sewer retention pond was already covered 
in bylaw 1590 at $6,353.52 per acre. So looking at this now, if I were to just sell my house and subdivide that, uh, I would have to pay out $60,000 approximately just to sell my house and subdivide it out of the rest of the acreage. Uh, <clears throat> by taking this money, this extra $8,500 an acre, which for my four acres would be about uh, $35,000, basically what that does, it, it takes all my seed money that I had for subdividing my property. So therefore, my property probably will never be subdivided because I don't have the seed money. So if you look at uh, bylaw number 1590, section seven, which has been passed, <clears throat> um, section seven it says, the object of charging of, off of each offsite and development levy is to pay the town of Carson for the past, present, and future capital costs for new and e expanded facilities for and item number three under that is storm drainage facilities. Well, this bylaw, now 1607, is storm drainage facilities, which has already been covered in bylaw 1590. So basically, you're taking another bylaw and charging again for what we're already paying for on bylaw number 1590, which I don't think is fair. I also don't think it's fair that you would only charge or divide the, the money out of those people in that little section, section A or whatever it's called, when in essence, most of the water that would go into that would come from the west side of the bypass road. And it would also protect the flooding downstream along second. So we're paying, like I'm paying, I'm at the top, I don't see where there's, when it rains, there's very little runoff from my property, but it's going to cost me $35,000 or so to have that storm sewage or retention pond, which I, I don't think is good. Also, uh, there was a motion passed by the previous council that out of the development funds, $25,000 would be spent to survey 11th Street. Well, when I got back, I didn't see any surveying that had been done. So I went and talked to the administrator and she said, well, they came and looked at it, but they never put any survey pins or anything. So I'm wondering what happened to the $25,000 that was supposed to survey 11th Street. I mean, where, where did that go? And that's like almost three years ago. I mean, how can we develop our land? And it's not just me, it's the other landowners. I mean, I'm at the end of the, the line, so to speak, so I have to coordinate with them to get through their property to even develop my land. How can I do it if, if it's not surveyed? So I don't think the town has kept up with its part of the bargain because they haven't surveyed 11th Street. So uh, I guess that's my presentation. I don't think that uh, this is, uh, you know, it's not acceptable to me and it's not acceptable to the rest of the landowners to start charging us another $8,500 an acre. When the 63-53-52 went in with bylaw 1590, uh, I thought, well, you know, that's fair. You know, I mean, we, we should pay for some of that stuff. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But now another $8,500 on top of it, which now puts it up to $15,000 an acre. And I'm, I'm not sure that, that the landowner should be paying for that. When in essence, when we put in the utilities, we put in the road, we put all the infrastructure in, and we turn it over to the town, and then for that we get the privilege of paying the town taxes. So I really don't think that's fair. And, uh, you know, I guess that's my whole presentation is a sense of fairness. I mean, if you want that area developed, and maybe you don't want it developed, and if you don't, that's fine. You should tell us so we can quit worrying about it. But if you want the area developed, I mean, you have to kind of help us a little bit. And that's by not putting encumbrances on it. I mean, just let us develop it. But when you, we want to develop it, and then you charge us more money to develop it, and then we turn it all over to you, and then you collect the taxes. What, what incentive do I have to develop my seven lots? Okay, so thank you, uh, Mr. Bagazi. Uh, comments from council? Uh, Mr. Bagazi, <coughs> I'm new on this council, so I'm trying to understand the whole issue. Okay. So in order to understand, I went back to the West Carlston uh, Area Structure Plan. Yes. 
And I understand that you were the mayor at the time and yes. you signed that document yes. as a bylaw 1559. Now, in reading that document, I read Article 9 to 13 mm -hmm. and regarding to the, the palm, that, that thing, it might not um, change what you said, but for the record, uh, I was interested in reading what it said. It said, a landowner whose parcel of land is not specifically designated to accommodate the stormwater detention as per, as per the design of this plan will likely be required to provide money in lieu based on the formula to pay for their land parcel share. Yes. I... So that means to me that mm -hmm. there is some kind of formula that the town would kind of devise mm -hmm. in order to come to something that would be agreeable, I would say, to the landowners and to the town. Something of that sort. Right. And I, I agree with you. And there is a formula. It's, it's called Bylaw 1590, Offsite and Development, which calls for the, that, uh, I just read it to you. Yes. It calls for storm drainage facilities, which okay. is already being paid in, in bylaw 1590. All right. Okay. So maybe, maybe administration can kind of help us a little bit with the discrepancy between the two bylaws. Yes. Um, in bylaw 1590, the schedule that is attached to outline the off-site levies that are being collected under that bylaw, there's particularly for water distribution upgrades, sanitary sewer system upgrades, uh, west area structure plan, cost, um, oh, sorry, yes, just the sanitary sewer and the water distribution. And that includes areas from um, the northwest trunk, central trunk and siphon, northeast trunk lift station. And then um, that information was divided amongst a number of areas that would be benefactors of that. And that would be areas identified in the West Area Structure Plan, east of the golf course south of 9th Avenue and the East Area Redevelopment Plan, and the West Industrial. So in that bylaw, the, um, the schedule outlines the off-site levy collected for specific purpose, and the purpose identified in that bylaw is water distribution and sanitary sewer system. So it's not a pond, it's not a storm retention, water retention. And, and it does say in the schedule, off-site levy is intended to collect for, um, and it talks about a number of items in there, um, which then says it would be incorporated as per Schedule A, and Schedule A outlines which of those items it would be collected for. So this, the storm retention pond was not identified in that schedule. Okay, so that's... May I comment on that? Sure. It says very specifically, object of the levies, uh, item number three is storm drainage facilities. Now, when you say a storm drainage facilities, I would say that is a storm retention pond because that's part of the drainage facilities. I think it's accurate, though, uh, to say that a, a storm retention pond uses settling and does not disperse water. It uses settling, and that's the intent of it, is so that that water does not get dispersed down uh, through the system. But it does high, uh, involve settling more than anything else. Now, one other thing that I need to mention that because we've got a document here that we've been given, uh, and it talks about, and you referred to it in your presentation, at no time has any surface water, storm water, et cetera, west of 12th Street been included in our engineering uh, perspectives. Uh, that's dealt with separately and is at, not at all part of this engineering study involving the, the West Area Structure Plan. And so just to clarify, that is another uh, issue. It, it is an issue, but it's an issue that's being dealt with separately and uh, does not become part of the, uh, the retention and the dispersal of uh, storm water in Area A. 
the fact that it's present doesn't change the fact that it still doesn't in, get involved in that. It, it's going to be dealt with separately. Uh, we need to have some discussions probably with the county. And there is a plan for a separate retention pond uh, as necessitated west of 12th Street. I guess my question is, Mr. Mayor, does council want that land developed? Because if they do, then they, they've got to quit hitting us with these charges. Councilor Smith? Well, I think council wants a lot of land developed, but I think we want, to, we want the developers to actually pay some costs instead of coming to the town uh, requesting funds and, and uh, do the infrastructure and the pond or retention funds. Uh, without, uh, you go to any other community and their developers are putting those systems in by themselves as they develop. They're actually required to put them in there. They well, if you go to the city of Lethbridge and ask for money so they can put a retention pond in, so they can put up a, a subdivision. If you go to Granham, they have a nice subdivision right outside of town. A lot of people are moving there. And I believe Granham put that subdivision in. And they sold the lots. I mean, we are not the city of Lethbridge. We're 3,500 people now. We're 3,500 people 50 matter. years ago. We can't, we can't rely on the taxpayers to, to develop your land. And, uh, We're not asking for the taxpayers to develop well, the land. We're asking council not to hit us with these levies. I mean, the levy, when I started to develop this land, was 60... Well, there's nothing when I first had the land. And then it was $6,300, and now it's $15,000 an acre. So That's a big you, difference. Where are you coming up with, you're going to have to pay out $35,000 to subdivide your land or, or whatever? Right. So when you subdivide your land, what happens when you sell that lot? That lot? Do you pay the thirty-five or the five hundred, or do you pass that cost on to whoever's buying the lot? Well, if you get the lot so high, they're not going to sell them. Well, then I guess you got to take a little bit less, I guess, right? But I mean, well, you do pass that cost on to whoever's buying your lot. That would be common sense. What What would be the sense in subdividing if you're not going to make a profit? That's it. That's just so what's what the is. point? Well, no, it's not the way it is. It's the point. It's the way it is for council if they don't want houses paying taxes there. I mean, if I want to subdivide and you say, okay, you put in the facilities and everything, and you collect the taxes and you look after the road. I'll be glad to collect the taxes because that's a good investment. But I've got to come off over three other properties to get to my property in, a, in 11th Street. And here the town, when they made the motion and said they would survey 11th Street, never kept up their end of the bargain because they never surveyed 11th Street. Things change, Bob. Things no, things change. don't change. When the motion is okay. made and uh, it's supposed to be done, it should be done. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the... Mary, did you have your hand up for to make a comment? Um, just to clarify on the um, surveying of 11th Street, we did have a surveyor come in and work on 11th Street. Um, at that time, we were unable to access the property to the north where the street was designed to go. And at that time, I think we had two different proposals that came in beyond that, that um, council agreed to allow the access to come off of 12th through the property owners and it wouldn't include any of the owners who were not interested in subdividing at that time. And at that time it was left up to, I believe there was three property owners, Mr. Sanderson, uh, Mr. Bagazi, and Mr. Schaefer is Mr. where the Holland. land. Mr. Holland. Mr. Holland also. No, I think the other, the last design that was proposed didn't include Holland's property at all. Well, there were three proposals yeah. given. So and that's why that survey never never went through to the subdivision stage is because there was property owners along 11th Street that were not interested at that time to give the land to the town or sell the land to the town. Okay, was there another question or comment here uh, for council? So this is a very de a delicate matter for us. Uh, we haven't rushed into it. We are having some further discussion. Uh, and there have been, as you're aware, two readings uh, that have passed. And uh, again, we've got a document here that's been presented to us uh, where all of the landowners up there have signed uh, a petition in opposition to, uh, let's read it exactly so that I don't uh, make any mistakes on this. Um, August 23rd, so just uh, 
couple of weeks ago to Mayor and Council of Cards Alberta proposed by Law 1607 The Pond. We being owners of properties located in area A of the West Card Scenario Structure Plan, which properties may in the future be developed or subdivided, are strongly opposed to bylaw 1607 being an off-site levy in the amount of 85.11.60 per acre, as estimated in Schedule B of this bylaw. Payable at time of application for subdivision or development to help pay for the capital costs of construction of a West Area A stormwater retention pond. So we have the names of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that would my guess be the entire uh, list of landowners up in that uh, West Area A. And uh, there is some wording here uh, talking about uh, some of the re relevant concerns uh, that are there. <coughs> any any comments by council? Well, mine goes back to the original document. Is that it seems to me at the time there was an understanding that a cost had to be borne. Not for a, the water retention plan. But that's what it or, says, though. For storm. What the cost that was to be borne was the cost in that bylaw of sixty-three hundred dollars. Not an additional net cost of eighty five hundred dollars, which now puts it up to fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, so essentially, what seemed to be the difficulty is that the bylaw fifteen ninety to you, as you understand it, includes the storm uh, water retention pond. Anything to and do should with not drainage. have had another bylaw dealing with that issue. That's yes. essentially where the difficulty is right now. Yes. Thank you. Any uh, any further questions or comments from council? Okay, uh, Mr. Bajazi, thank you. This is our next agenda item. Thank you. Uh, under 6A, having to do with the uh, off-site levy storm retention pond. Business arising, I'll just read it. Bylaw 1607, off-site levy storm retention pond. Taking into consideration discussions at previous meetings and the, rep and the presentation from Bob Agassi. Does council wish to proceed with third reading of the bylaw? At present, there are two readings complete. A third reading is required to proceed with collection of the off-site levy. If third reading is not approved, what further action does council require of administration? Now, this is the way this would proceed. Um, if a motion for third reading is forthcoming <clears throat> from the council, then we'll deal with it after appropriate discussion. If uh, no motion for third reading is forthcoming, then council will have to decide what course of action we will take in regard to this issue of bylaw 1607 and the concerns raised by uh, the unanimous representation of the landowners in that area. I, it, it's been my understanding that the addition of reference to the stormwater retention pond was not included or not contemplated in the prior bylaw dealing with stormwater drainage. So those are, are two issues that, uh, at least in the opinion of, from what I recall from the opinion of the Department of the Environment, uh, they are distinct and separate issues. So if we're talking about semantics, then uh, 1607 does refer to stormwater retention and not to stormwater drainage or stormwater drainage system. Um, any questions? Councillor uh, Cronin and then Councillor Smith. Uh, in fairness to the whole process, I would like to review the bylaw 1590 and reread 1607 just to make sure that I understand the two issues as being separate issue in my own mind. And then I think I will be quite ready to take some action. 
Thank you, Councillor Smith. Well, I was just going to say I'd be prepared to, to call for third reading, but if if everyone wants more time, then. But at this point in time, I'm prepared to call for third reading. There. So to clarify, Councillor Cronin, are you asking for a motion to table third reading? I would think that maybe it would be wise to table it just to make sure that we all understand the the bylaws as recorded properly and to make a, a wise uh, decision at that point. It might not change the issue that okay. there has to be paid, but at least we would say we have done uh, due dil diligence in getting knowledgeable again or reacquainted with that bylaw. So in essence then, can we record a motion to table third reading? I would say so. Okay. Uh, discussion on the motion to table third reading. Okay, seeing none, I will call the question to table third reading. All in favor of tabling third reading. Uh, that's carried. So uh, we, will, we will advise the landowners when this issue will reappear on the agenda. We will not meet because of AUMA convention uh, in two weeks. That meeting has been canceled. Our next council meeting will not be until the 9th. There will be a Committee of the Whole on the, on the uh, 2nd but the, uh, of October. But the, uh, and will Mary, do we, we, that probably doesn't give us enough time to do the research that uh, has been requested. Uh, comparing the bylaw. So are we going to suggest that we would have it on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole or for Council on the 9th? Probably Committee of the Whole. Okay, so I think if, if this is acceptable notice to all interested landowners, then this will come on the agenda for Committee of the Whole. Committee of the Whole on the 2nd uh, of October being the first Tuesday of the month. And the Committee of the Whole starts at 4 p.m., different than the normal council meetings, which are at 5 p.m., okay? So that gives us three weeks to do some work on this, to, to have some background uh, ready to, to look at, uh, probably even some uh, professional opinions, possibly some, some of the planners that have been involved in, in these issues as to whether or not the, the prior bylaw, as referenced by Mr. Bagazi, uh, should include reference to a stormwater retention pond. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Council, and thank you, Mr. Bagazi. Um, we now move to uh, request for decision, Council Committee of the Whole Recommendations, Policy L slash 10 1 on the uh, the land sale. Changing the policy. The land sale policy. So there's a motion from the CCW to approve the land sale policy. What's in your package is just the motions. We didn't read distribute all of the data that is attached to those questions. Oh yes, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so was that that was in reference to uh, commercial development, was it, huh? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. on the west side of town, or or well, or any any part of town. Just just the the yeah, clar clarifying the, the land sale policy in regard to in, development, development, yes or no, commercial or or okay. industrial land, right. and uh, okay, we went through that. So. Is, is there anyone prepared to make a motion? Uh, for approval of uh, that policy as per the Committee of the Whole recommendation. Councillor Cronin, you're prepared to make that motion? Yeah, I would make the motion that we carry on as discussed at the Committee any, of the Whole. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call a question all in favor of the recommendation on the land sale policy. Thank you very much. Uh, motion opposed. carries. One opposed. One, opposed. One opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. I did my count. I got to five, and then I just quit. Yeah, no, the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the Rotary Golf Tournament sponsorship uh, recommended by committee. The whole. Make that motion. Councilor Court makes that motion, uh, and we sponsor the whole for two hundred dollars. Any discussion on that motion? 
Uh, Councilor Court so moves approval of that. All in favor? Uh, carries. Grant application by Don Godfrey to do a, a cards in history, and he's not uh, so asking for support. any financial support. He's just asking for letter support, and it was recommended by Committee of the Whole to uh, to provide uh, a letter of support. Can I have a motion, Councillor? Edmund so moves. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all in favor. Uh, that motion carries. The next one was a letter of support for Fort McLeod vis-a-vis -vis the police college, which the province basically pulled the pin on. Uh, Committee of the Whole recommended we send a letter of support, CCing all uh, relevant uh, MLAs, cabinet ministers, probably right up to the premier. Uh, can I have a motion, Councillor Creed? So moves. Any discussion on that motion for the letter of support for Fort McLeod in relation to the college? All in favor? Now, the addition of the uh, 7-5, Roman numeral V, had to do with the request for water charges. How much were the water charges again? Marion, do you remember the water charges? For the $83. $83. $83. Let me give some background that, that didn't find its way to the table. I find it a little distressing that the organization which provides hundreds of hours of volunteer labor for our powwow, five powwows actually, since 19, sorry, since 2008, further, the organization that has provided thousands, thousands of hours of volunteer labor for the community cleanup, and initially instigated the community cleanup, and has provided thousands of hours, and they didn't ask for compensation for that, but the town is a direct beneficiary of all of those volunteer hours for the powwows, and for the community cleanup. That's a concern to me. That's a serious concern to me. Other organizations were mentioned uh, doing good things, and I, I'm fine with other organizations uh, doing good things. So I'm, I'm going to, because the administration didn't get any direct uh, instructions on how to proceed, that their, I guess their, their motion uh, being denied for the water waiver of $83 was uh, maybe direction enough. But as I pondered that concern, uh, yes, that organization has deep pockets. They actually landscape and maintain one of Cardston's, if not the most significant tourist attraction bringing tens of thousands of dollars annually in the community and we can't give them some water for their youth at no charge <clears throat> or at least do them the courtesy of sending them a letter that we now have a policy that uh, we have to have complied with to, to give them the water or to waive the fee, Council Court. Uh, I can't remember exactly. What was the purpose? Why did they ask for a waiver? Is because it was waived four years ago, for one thing. Yes, Carl, I understand all the rationale that you put forward, but I also think that as a matter of principle, we can't, we can't adapt and fix and pick and choose who we're going to give a waiver and who we won't give a waiver. I understand all what you said and it's perfectly legitimate. I have no argument against any of what you said, except that I feel that as a council, six of us at a council committee of a whole said that we were not prepared to waive for different reasons that were exposed publicly. And therefore, I don't know why we because he, back because he on didn't this. comply with uh, our policy. Is that your point? Is it's not only the policy, but 
it has also something to do with that aspect. I understand that it would have been nice if they had known that we had a donation policy. And I was the first one to say it would be great to let them know that we have a donation uh, policy that could satisfy the um, waiving of that element. But we also have put policies in place so that people abide by the policies. Yes, you say they did not know, but a lot of people don't know about a lot of things. doesn't make them less responsible. So. But then we turned right around and we violated our own policy in regard to the oh. donation to the Rotary Club. What's our time limit, uh, time requirement for applying? One is 30 days. That's one part of the policy. 30 days. Now, we didn't abide by that one in the Rotary request for the tournament. And maybe we made a mistake there too. Okay, okay. Councilor Creed? Yes. Um, you know, what you said was good, you know, it applies to the, basically the, the, the LDS Church as a whole. Here we have, basically, we have two stakes in Cardston. We have the, the Cardston West stake and, and the Cardston stake. This, this was one, one stake, and uh, I think Councilor Crona is the only one in the Cardston stake, and the rest of, are in the West stake, but uh, where, where it's, it's not, you know, where the, where the church as a whole, you know, uh, I, would, I would agree with every one of your points. That, that they they do provide to to the whole community, uh, you know where it's where it's one church. You know it could be could be the the, the Anglican Church or it could be the United Church. Could uh, be, but uh, and and they and they all provide service. I mean, in accordance with their numbers, we understand the LDS Church has overwhelming numbers. Uh, I I just uh, and you know on on the precedent. I mean that that's something. Did did we? Also contribute to the Cardston stake, uh, or is it just the the West stake? I'm not aware. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you know, if if we if we if we do have a total precedent for for both stakes, the only the only other donation I'm aware of is in 2008 when they held Moroni's Quest. We there was a motion of council. For the for the west west stake for the Carson West. Oh, that stake. was the east stake. Was it the east stake? Because whoever whichever <laughs> stake put on Moroni no, West was. I mean that is I something. Think they both did it in a way, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, right. well the, the the west stake has done it every four years. So what the Carson West stake? I don't know if the Carson stake did it. I'm just and you know if there is a precedent, you know, it it might be a consideration, but. Uh, maybe you know, sending them notice that this is our policy now, and and uh, there may be a difference. But uh, you know, I, I'd like to see maybe some a little research into into the exact precedent that we have. The, the precedent is in 2008. The water was waived. Water fee was waived for the Moroni's Quest event. Prior and to the event or after? Af uh, well. We didn't have a doesn't question. show, so I don't know mm -hmm. if it was before or after. Yeah. At that time, we didn't have a donation policy okay, all right. as well. And just for the record, we have notified the recipient of the request, the person who asked, uh, we have notified them of the donation policy, so they're aware. Yeah. Okay. After they sent the letter? or Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so. After Council's decision at the Committee of the Whole, we notified them that the decision was that we wouldn't waive the fees, but also let them know of the policy that's currently in place. That's right. Well, that's it. So what are we looking for by that? Well, um... Yep. Let's put a motion. Yep. Procedurally, we would need a motion as per the decision of Committee of the Whole not to waive. And so the chair will entertain, uh, uh, and whatever motion uh, is forthcoming, the chair will entertain it and allow for discussion if there is any discussion. I'll make a motion that we don't waive the $83 or $85. Okay. Moved by Councillor Smith that the uh, decision of Committee of the Whole to uh, deny the waiver request uh, and uh, all in favor of the motion to deny the waiver request. Opposed? 
Thank you. Um, we now move into the item regarding 7B, the Rural Community Physician Attraction and Retention Conference. Uh, discussions have been had with the Cardston Clinic, and uh, they are in no way concerned with physician attraction and retention. So that basically uh, is a, an item of correspondence uh, requesting involvement in their conference that we have no need for as per the information from our clinic. In fact, they have a physician wishing to come and currently there is no opening. So that's where that stands. Um, 7C bylaw 1616, the dog bylaw. After discussion with our legal uh, advisors in Edmonton, there was a significant amount of uh, rewrite that, that took place in that uh, uh, bylaw. The penalties were significantly increased uh, for, the, for the dogs that uh, cause a problem. So the chair will call for first reading of the dog bylaw 1616. Moved by Councillor Dow, first reading of bylaw 1616, the dog bylaw. Uh, any discussion on the motion for first reading? Councillor Edmonds. On section up here. five, there's a typo where it says yeah. uh, nuisance log license. Which one? Section five. five. Four. And there says uh, nuisance log license rather than nu nuisance dog license. Okay. Yeah. Tell me the section, please, again. Section four. It would be four. No, it's five, sorry. No. So that's 2N section... Because I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in nuisance dog and I'm looking... Uh, okay, so it would be eight or eight, okay. Yeah, Marion, there, there is three other typos that I found, but maybe I will uh, I will come to your office and show you where I saw them, okay? So don't change the, yeah. the intent of the bylaw. Word change, yeah, there was a one word change that I found. Yeah. I, I, I quite... Uh, I was very upset, yes. to say the least, mm -hmm. when this information and le letters from citizens were brought to our attention about uh, nuisance dogs and uh, dog owners who failed to uh, keep their dogs properly uh, contained. So uh, I, I, I'm prepared to accept second reading, but I think that's maybe as far as we would go tonight. Is someone prepared to make second reading? No, we haven't voted on first reading. Sorry, all, all in favor of first reading? Sorry. Okay. Anyone want to move second reading? Uh -huh. no. 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 Councillor Court moves uh, second reading. Discussion on second reading? Um, I'll just make a comment, I guess, and maybe we can go as far as second reading, but uh, this, this is calling for some uh, organization and some, some personnel that we don't have in place yet. So uh, it's, you know, th those, those, what are you uh, looking at, Councillor? Well, he's talking about uh, uh, basically a, a committee, a dog yeah. committee, to uh, make the decisions. LCMP. Right, and and we of course in some per like say personnel that uh, aren't in place. And before we can really mm -hmm. pass the bylaw, we we, we need to uh, provide that uh, that structure. Uh, the the chair is not going to call for third reading. I permission okay. to call for third reading. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on s motion for second reading? Okay, I'll call uh, for the motion on second reading. Uh, okay, that carries. Now, um, this then will move forward to a, a subsequent meeting for third reading. So again, uh, we'll need to look at some of those concerns and, and address them. Uh, the next item is the Orsk finance proposal, and I'm gonna call on our Orsk representative, Councillor Court, to speak to that, Marion has a little bit of information, and I also have a little bit of information to shed on that. Uh, Councilor Court, if you would please. Yeah, I assume you all have this. You got it today. Yeah, I, um, I got it for the first sure. time when we were dealing with it as well. That was a big concern of the people that were on the committee at Orsk. 
that we were not informed ahead of time. Apparently they had called in the CEOs, but not all the CEOs could make it, ours could not make it. She had previous business going on. And so um, this was a bit of a surprise. That was the biggest concern for most people. ORSC is, um, of course, our development agency that comes in and does a very good job. But uh, like most people with the downturn of the economy, they, they're suffering. They're, they're losing money mm -hmm. and their reserves are getting rather thin. So they, they, in June, I believe, they called for a finance committee to make recommendations on how they could stop bleeding or raise cash, whatever else. Last year, they suggested that um, that when we go to an ORSC meeting, they cover the cost of our trip and, and, and half a day. And so they suggested last year that all the delegates just get the money from the council. And we were saying, well, that's basically, since we you were, we give you the money to run it anyhow, that's like double dipping for them. So that did not pass. And so that, that would have been a few thousand dollars. Uh, what this committee report basically asked for is an increase in uh, requisition for both the GIS, I think it was 5%, yeah. and their position would go up roughly $5,000. Now, a lot of people weren't very happy, with, by the way, they presented it by not letting us see it beforehand. Uh, so it has been tabled basically to another meeting coming up on the 11th of October, I believe. 9th of October. The 9th of October. Is that a meeting you'll oh, wait, attend? No, that 11, uh, we'll attend that 11th of October, sorry. Is that also a meeting that the CEO will attend? Um, I don't know. Marion Reed, would the CEOs, CEOs invited to that meeting as well on the 11th? Uh, no, the CIOs have been invited to a meeting this Thursday, yeah. Uh, so, uh, in discussion with the McGrath um, delegate that was there, Mr. Quinton, he believes that he thought that we could combine our communities, Carston, Carson County, McGrath, Raymond Sterling, and, and do just as good a job cheaper than, than Orsk. I'm not convinced that that's the case yet. Uh, Marion, you did talk with the other councilor, the other CAOs. Um, actually, we discussed yesterday at the mayor's and CAOs meeting with Raymond McGrath, Sterling, and Carston. Our, our, our unanimous recommendation was that a management review be, be uh, uh, requested simply because when things boomed in 05, 06, 07, given th uh, that time frame, uh, they responded in kind with increased staffing and, and the subsequent operational costs. There was some concern expressed by uh, just to review with you, the four mayors that meet are McGrath, Carson, Raymond, and Sterling. The county of Carson, uh, Carson County is invited to that meeting. They weren't there. Some very serious cost increases have uh, been proposed to be passed on. But we unanimously, and that's only, that's only uh, a group of four people, four mayors, requested a management review because they have not made, based on the graph of uh, income versus expenses. They have not made in the last four or so years the needed cutbacks in their operational costs once uh, membership and special project costs uh, came in from member municipalities. Uh, so the recommendation, and we'd like this uh, motion to be discussed and decided by this council, that way we'd give Councillor Court some direction moving forward, but I'll move, I'll, I'll see where that goes in a minute, Councillor Court. Uh, just in defense of ORSC, they have taken on more municipalities, which of course are bringing more money. They're also running into the same problem everybody else is the government requirements have increased. And so it's more, it's, it's basically you have to do uh, more stuff, more whatever they're doing with the government as far as regulations go. So I don't know if they can decrease their staff that much more. Well, I don't know. But, but they are about four hundred thousand dollars short, and that's what they're trying to recoup right here over the thirty-nine or so communities and and uh, counties that that use their services. So yes, I don't believe that would be a bad idea for a, some kind of a re financial review, an independent review. Um, yeah, yeah. municipality can. We can make that I just want to clarify. I think the recommendation from that the mayor's meeting was a third party operational yeah. financial review of their operations. Okay. I don't know that it was... 
particularly managing? Well, management, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. That's one of the words that uh, for me just is a broad-based <coughs> review, but specifically financial, which sort of goes back to the manager anyway. Uh, but uh, a, a fiscal review uh, by a third party, an outside, uh, an outside review, as opposed to an internal review, Councillor Cohen? I would be in favor to put a motion forward as to have a review uh, supported to try to understand uh, the OSC yeah, um, sure financial I situation. Okay, the chair uh, honors that motion and will be recorded as a motion by Councillor Cronin in support of the uh, fiscal review of, of ORS Corporations. Just a question, did everybody receive this, Marion, supposedly? Yes. yes. I don't uh, know. Just in, in just today. as an addition we, we just to the got agenda, it today. so you haven't had an opportunity to review those he's not finding it. I, I, I'm not finding it on the table here in front of me. Uh, uh, did you steal his counsel? Oh, maybe this is in there. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It was hiding that's there. Do <laughs> we need to bring this forward? Do you give us a chance to review it? Um, well, we yes, certainly take take your time, uh, fit it into your time, but the motion is on the table, uh, and this would be a motion, if, if, if approved by council, that uh, our delegate to Orsk, uh, uh, support back. that message from this council in support of a fiscal uh, independent third party review. Was that the opinion of the other mayors as well? The CEOs? Okay. Just for clarification, um, if I might, yeah. um, the town of Cardston's membership fee is proposed to increase in 2013 by 23 percent. I know. It's so that's high. a substantial increase. So, so how much is 130 And how much is Sterling's increase, just for the record? 323 percent. <laughs> okay. So any discussion on the motion to uh, direct our uh, delegate to uh, take to that board? Uh, support or not for a, a fiscal review uh, of the operations of Orsk. Well, one more question, and, and I probably heard it, but it slipped over my head. How many uh, how many communities does Orsk uh, serve? Roughly thirty nine. So oh, we got thirty nine right there. Basically, is who they're going to serve. And that's okay. Four hundred thousand bucks. So forty looks like forty there. So I'm just. Wondering, okay, and I mean, we, we had four four mayor or four mayors. They were never represented. Four represented. Cardston County was not represented, but the other four that. communities, Cardston, Sterling, McGrath, and Raymond, were represented. Okay. And uh, all supported this uh, concept mm -hmm. that we take back to our respective councils. I mean, that that body of four mayors in the Reeve have no legislative authority, but but we uh, all agreed to take back to our councils to seek uh, support of the council. Uh, the uh, the concept of uh, third party uh, review. review of the, the fiscal operations. Would it be possible to bring count Carson County on board on this thing to talk to them? I mean, it'd be nice if we had all the whole county plus. Can you have that Mr. discussion with Murray? Okay. Okay. Any discussion on the motion by Councillor Cronin? Okay, I'll call a question. All in favor of the motion to request a review. So there you go, Council. Uh, that carries. So, Councillor uh, Court, I'd like a copy of that motion if I can for the next meeting. Okay. So I can take it to the meeting with me. Okay. Do you want? Uh, we'll do a letter. Okay. And I'll get you. Councillor Creed, I'm just wondering on this with with all of those other communities that or serves, if there isn't a way, possibly through AUMA, we could have some dialogue with uh, some of the other. Uh, or communities to see if they uh, are feeling the same way because I mean, well, there's really no leg that, that links it into AUMA. Uh, well, it's, other, it's just an independent body that work for us. Right, and but like I say, there's there are th another 35 communities, right? That so I'm just wondering if we're getting if we have similar if we have similar ground with those other communities as well. I will tell you that when they presented this. Um, I cannot remember guess. where the guy was, but he uh, he was pretty much unanimous to table it until the, all the counties and all their councils had a chance to review it. And so I don't know what's going to happen, but we're having a special meeting. We don't we only usually meet every quarter. We were meeting again in October to discuss this very issue. 
So I don't know how you'd contact all the rest of them. I'm sure they're having their own discussions in the council. On yeah, this. they'll have their own discussions. They all have a representative that's supposed to be there and uh, involved in, in that process. Let me understand a little bit uh, something about the fee structure uh, for the councillors. <coughs> for the councillors that okay. attend that. It, they pay per DM plus mileage? Yes. But I, I'm trying to understand that because when I go to South Grove and I go to special meetings, they don't pay me per DM because it is part of my duty as part of my committee. Okay. And the town pays for the mileage. <coughs> But that's a different story. I'm trying to understand how your system works. So because I'm, they, because I'm they trying people, to understand why they pay per diem. Because they've had people that travel from quite a distance, and the structure has been set up so that when their board, which I am part of, goes there, or will pay per diem plus mileage. Of course, they are getting a lot of that money originally from the councils. The, the various people that are in Orsk. So, so, Mr. I'm, I'm I do understand surprised. that most, and not we may not be one of them, but most councils, when they have a member go out of town, leave town, they will pay their per diem plus mileage. So, so now, did you say that was discussed or not? That it was discussed last year where they wanted to to uh, not pay that and just have the councils pay whatever the councils pay, and it was defeated by the. By the organization, but that was a year ago. It was a year ago. Prior to any concerns over the financial. Well, position. I think they were starting to creep in by then already. Okay, my thinking is that even though that's taking the money from this hand to put it over to this hand, it's probably something well worth considering or revisiting. Uh, we, c I think, we would rather handle. I mean, I'm only speaking for myself. Uh, I think council would rather handle that added cost because we could. You know, rather than 100%. a significant uh, increase in our in our membership, but uh, but the problem's got to go deeper than that. There's no question the problem's got to go deeper than that. Also, this is just my own, I guess, opinion on this. Uh, when I am traveling to Lethbridge or wherever, if you're traveling to Lethbridge, you're taking a lot of time out of your day. Well, I do. I but do believe that you should be get paid per diem for that. Why? Because I'm already paid. Uh, well, under the committees, councillors that uh, don't the travel, they're not paying. They're getting paid the same as you are. But it doesn't disturb me. It's part of my duty. I'm paying mileage. That's fair enough. Okay. okay so now, councillor Creed. Um, yeah, I, I just want to clarify. You know, when I suggested, uh, you know, a you know AUMA involvement, I guess uh, what I was thinking was uh, councillor Court indicated that uh, one of the problems that they're having with Orsk is, is increased. Provincial regulations or requirements is that was that, was that correct? That's that's, that's filtering into every organization. And yes. and I know we're 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 really too late to make uh, resolutions for this year's AUMA, but uh, I'm thinking it may be a discussion among the communities that at least for for the maybe next year's AUMA or or to put into the AUMA uh, uh, thinking that uh, that we ask the province to back off because I mean even with the Chinook Foundation I'm finding that ad, you know additional provincial regulations is is, is, is causing you know everything to uh, escalate in costs. How and about that, electricity? <laughs> well that, yeah there's lots of things but uh, but uh, there's no question there's the, the regulatory burden that's being imposed on us provincially and federally it just gets weightier and weightier uh, with each passing uh, minute, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. Councillor uh, Court, if I could make one more argument, I guess in favor of Orsk and the number of people working there. Uh, any organization doesn't matter who you are it requires a certain number of people to operate that organization. It uh, because they're going to 40 different communities. That means we have a person here every Thursday, every once a month on the on the second Thursday. It comes out for our NPC meetings. They've got. I believe eight people going anywhere from the county of Newell to Crow's Nest Pass and north to Pass Vulcan. I don't believe they can cut back too much on their on their employment there. I don't know how else they're going to cut their costs, well, but I, I believe they're almost stretched the limit now as far as uh, their travel and people going here, there, and everywhere. So that's part of our obligation, part of our money we pay is to have them come out and advise us at MPC, and that has to be paid for somehow. Councillor Edmonds. Have they looked into teleconferencing? 
as far as just they stay in Lethbridge and come to here? Are we set up for teleconferencing? Yeah, you, yes, you we are. Here. I, We've done that. I could bring that up. No, that, it's certainly nice to have him sitting right next to me with the legislation right in front of him, though. So then, the, you know, you have access to him. It's a two-way conversation. Right? Yeah. Yes. But, yeah. but if you look at page seven of this document, if you look at page seven of this document, and you look at the graph of uh, income <coughs> and outgo, uh, 2007 was wonderful. Look at all the money that came in. But uh, 2008 on, it's a whole different picture. So I think the uh, fiscal audit, the management review. A lot of their money comes from uh, subdivisions, and that's pretty much dried up. Yeah. And that's, well, that's what's hurt them a lot in the last true. few years. I mean, they're going to hit like everybody else with the recession. So anyway, the motion stands, and so we'll see how that goes, and we'll see what happens, what comes in from the other uh, okay. 38 uh, member, member municipalities. Okay. Um, Okay, so now we move down into committee and other reports. Motion, the town council motion list is there for your uh, scrutiny also. I have, I have three questions on that. Okay. On the meeting with Doug Sheen, number one, it says we'll bring forward a proposal shortly. I don't know what shortly means. Well, he hasn't done it, period, so. Well, but we reach up to date and then down with a meeting with Terry Henry and Susan Shipley. They're, they will look at options. I don't know what that means. Then on the repair of the first 3D sewer, I think we should have some idea of what the cost is going to be. I think we do. We already know the cost. That was part of the motion to proceed. Yeah, last time we did that. So some of these issues that say uh, shortly, Anytime the ball's in the other person's court, then we just sit and, and wait, and uh, I don't see that there's any purpose served by us trying to rattle their chain. Uh, if they don't want to do anything shortly, that's their problem. And I, Mr. Mayor, I could have updated this on the um, Terry Henry. Uh, they have made a request just this week to, uh, last week, sorry, to attend the meeting on October 2nd. So they'll be back to council that day. So sorry, I didn't put that update on there. Okay. All right. One other thing, the uh, full committee was supposed to meet was on the 25th, but we're not going to be yeah, here. So <laughs> will they do that? On they're scheduled for October. October. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that needs to be updated on the on the yeah. September. Bylaw and animal control is there for your uh, scrutiny. The report from the native liaison officer is likewise there. Um, Is the beaver in town? Um, yeah. can, I, can I talk to you in that? At the last meeting that we had at the economic development, no, it was a beautification yeah, committee, yeah. sorry. Horton was there, and uh, Zenas was there representing the chamber, and said that many merchants were very appreciative of Horton's work uh, in moving uh, the population around that strip and felt that it was a very successful program and did not want to see that program um, disappear yeah. or his hour cut even more because I felt that I had a great benefit from his presence on that strip. I received a letter just today from the Chamber of Commerce and as well from Zenith as a business owner that will be on the October 2nd agenda. There's a request they're putting forward to extend that position. Um, but like I said, I just received it today. Okay. So we're doing the background information on that and the cost. Yeah, I just wanted to pass that on. And let me add, uh, I don't remember whether it was under this council or prior council, probably under this council. Uh, the girls from the uh, TD Bank are pretty much disgusted, which happens uh, about what happens down uh -huh. that corridor there. And so I spoke with one of the senior people, and she said, you know, if they look out their windows, their windows at, from their desks, and look out to the south, there's, there's a bit of an alcove in there yes. uh, behind uh, Sears or Holland Insurance, one of the two or both. And there's just all kinds of disgusting things going on back there. So if you maybe want to pass that along to Lloyd or whatever, uh, 
it's an ongoing problem, but we can't be uh, letting up on our uh, policing of those kinds of things. Um, committee reports. Uh, so does anyone know when Ag Society last met? We meet on Thursday. Did you meet over the summer? I guess you had a lot of work with Ag Board, hey? If they did, that was without me. Oh, okay. But there is a meeting on Thursday during the Corn Festival. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> Councillor Smith on the airport? Uh, no, nothing this month. Though. Councillor uh, Cronin on South Grove? We had a meeting yesterday, and uh, we have on the back burner, we have Renewable Energy in cooperation with uh, Lesbridge College and first uh, regional study on raw and treated water. Okay. We're doing fine uh, financially. In fact, we're doing very well. Good, great. Count, thank you. Councillor uh, Creed, I think Communities in Bloom is yours. Yeah, Communities in Bloom. Uh, of course, we're winding down some from the, the summer. We've had a good summer, uh, some good activities. One, one project that's still underway is that uh, everyone liked the, the little planters to go around the trees on Main Street. And uh, they've every second tree. Every second tree, uh, they've determined that uh, they will use the money that they have left for this year and purchase materials. And they've uh, uh, obtained a, a discount from Home Hardware to uh, anyway get the materials and have volunteers uh, build enough planters to finish the the 200 block on Main Street uh, this year. So that will be a project that'll go on. Chief Mountain Solid Waste. And Chief Mountain Solid Waste. Well, we have our first uh, meeting this tomorrow, and uh, we've had a few discussions, of, you know, concerns right now uh, with uh, the burn pile, given that there's a fire ban on. Uh, there will be an item that I'll probably bring up at the at the our meeting in regards to that. But uh, other than that, there's nothing that I can really report yet. <laughs> Okay, uh, Councillor Dow, Chinook Foundation. <clears throat> we did not have a meeting in August, but uh, uh, in meeting with uh, Mr. Schnorr today, they've got a problem with the na name Chinook Foundation. Somebody else has registered that name and, and has it in their control, and they're going to have some problems with the name Chinook, Chinook Foundation here when they buy that land that they bought by the... Uh, Diamond Willow Lodge and registering, so they don't know what they're going to do with that yet. Ask someone that as well. Well, oh, Councillor Dowry saw this letter from yesterday that was sent to us, were forwarded to us. Uh, probably some good news for the Chinook Foundation eventually. Uh, there's been a discussion of how where the senior lodges fall, where the which ministry will take care of that. It looks like we are now the responsibility of Alberta Municipal Affairs, and they are. They are hiring consultants to visit each of the lodges, reassess their condition, which is what they've needed to do for years and years. And then they will discuss the management body's concerns with the condition of their lodges and any plans they may have for the future. Maybe finally the government will take the responsibility since they own those buildings and actually bring them up to code and up to whatever else it might be. So it looks yeah. promising, this particular that was forwarded yesterday to us. So hopefully, Something will be done about the conditions. These lodges, most were built in the 60s or late 50s, early 60s, and they do need some work. So okay, economic development and tourism. Well, there is quite a few things that were reported at our meeting in uh, early September uh, by administration, and that dealt with oil and gas meeting with Shell uh, representative uh, as to the future uh, of that area. There was also a talk about the advocacy work on a new hospital. Uh, discussions were uh, taken place with the senior management of capital planning for Alberta Health regarding plans for expansion of the hospital and renovations. And uh, except uh, right now the project is unfunded, but we were told that we were fairly high on the list. So that was good news to our ears. Uh, there were a uh, report on executive training program that could come to Carlston. That's also something that could be a favorable, favorable for us in conjunction with uh, Lethbridge uh, College. 
uh, restaurant contact. We were told uh, by someone of the oil industry that we cannot expect to have people come to our town if we don't have later hours in our restaurant uh, <coughs> industries because many shifts and late and it would be nice if some most restaurants or food place were open later. Did you did you have anyone from restaurant industry at the meeting? No, we had contacted all of them previous to the meeting. Now um, I can tell you that there's a seasonal slowdown at least from my end. I can also tell you that a, a, a building that I am part owner of, but I don't any didn't get involved in the management. They're still having severe labor problems. Yes, uh, I just uh, that Athens part. Restaurant. They have put in requests for. Uh, some, you know, with the LMOs and the process for foreign workers. They can't get the labor, they can't get the help that they need. It's, it's a very difficult thing. There was another item, was a non-residential meal rate comparison, and that maybe we'll need to bring that back at a, at a further meeting uh, to help you understand the comparison that was yeah, made yeah. as requested. And uh, the economic development now has a newsletter that is distributed on, uh, through the internet, through the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, it's not exactly uh, the whole thing, but every month there will be a little bit of news, and we're soliciting news from the oil and gas uh, industry to do that. And there was also, at, the, at that meeting, a presentation by uh, Lloyd Curl. We had asked, uh, as a board, if they could provide us more information regarding the community future, the whole idea was that we voted to, as a council, to go to with community future in Lethbridge as a natural corridor and way of doing business for our area. Uh, Reef Curl felt that we should understand the politics behind. Uh, and re remaining with Pincher Creek. Uh, he would like to come and present his position to this council. So that's up to council <coughs> to decide if that's something they want to entertain. We have invited them to do so. But you as a council need to decide if you feel that the politics of community future need to change our mind. Well, I'm going to comment on that, uh, Councillor. I appreciate that you're at that meeting and that you uh, represented us quite nicely. Um, clearly, I, th I think it's been the opinion of Council that uh, all of our synergies, all of our trade patterns, our, uh, our, our, our business uh, connections are into the city of Lethbridge. We have few, if any, connections that move west to, to, to Pincher Creek. And uh, I don't need to say any more than that. Uh, Lethbridge, Community Future Lethbridge has a, a very good track record of performance for the communities that have membership with Community Futures in Lethbridge. So, I mean, I, I don't see any reason why the Reef couldn't come. He's a member of that board. I don't see why he couldn't come and speak to us, but I really want to see some some hard evidence that our needs would be served by staying with Community Futures Southwest as opposed to moving to Community Futures Lethbridge. If I remember right, I would be ready to do a presentation to Council in October, early October, so that as early as I could do it. But I stated our position as per the letters that we sent. He and Community Future uh, Manager thought that maybe we should understand the politics behind it. I won't ask you to repeat a comment that was made in regard to... Or no, no, I would not. ask you to. <laughs> okay, now, <clears throat> there used to be fire and ambulance on the emergency services, but it's now just fire. Councillor uh, Creed, I think that's who? That's yeah. Um, Although we, you know, we still have the 
the personnel that work for Alberta Health Service. And that's been a, a bit of a juggling act for, for Danny, uh, but he feels like he's getting a better handle on it now and getting, there seems to be good morale among the, the fire uh, uh, crew and the volunteers now and, and things are improving other than that. Uh, I don't have uh, anything significant to report. Uh, okay. The only thing is about <coughs> is the ambulance, that they're trying to get license. <coughs> yeah, the, bill, the ambulance with a bill of sale. Oh. Remember? They have an unlicensed. Oh, right, yeah. That, yeah. Well, that's something they're working on, and yeah. they'll. They'll deal with that. <laughs> Again, that's Alberta, transfer, that's Alberta Health Services. In a that's transfer, Alberta Health Services. Yeah, yeah, in a transfer, they obtain an ambulance, but it's unlicensed, mm -hmm. so yeah. it cannot be put on a road. So it's <laughs> nice, but uh, they need a bill of sale. Well, they need so it's available. It's available. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, parts, maybe. <laughs> okay, FCSS. We have no Okay, Handy Bus. Uh, meeting next week there, and uh, I understand there's some issues. Uh, that went on with the handy bus one of the lifts wasn't working and there's some upset folks there so much so that they actually sent a, uh, sent a letter or communication to the mla or whatever so they didn't have the uplifting experience here well, expecting it's not yeah mike's taking care of the whole thing there and just so just so those know that uh, commented on it it wasn't the mla that actually got things going mike was waiting for a part for the machine there so, okay. really <laughs> like so. historical society in July, they entertained a group from the Galt Museum with their Get Out of Town tour. Mm. We had about 25 people show up. We fed them lunch and gave them a little handout. That went very well. We also hired a person to work over the museum, and she spent most of her time when she wasn't conducting tours, uh, cataloging some more information that we have. Okay. <coughs> you meet again when? Meet uh, next week. Okay. Yeah, MPC. Not much going on over the summer. We have quite a bit going on Thursday. There's four or five things going on. Okay. Levitt Irrigation District. No, no meeting. Pro no meeting. Okay. Library. Uh, same. No meeting. Should be a meeting next week. Or so. Okay. <coughs> uh. Sorry, I, I said that wrong. Intermunicipal yeah, Development Plan Meeting. That's us in the county. We haven't really met uh, in the last three or four months. Sorry, so MPC, same thing, no meeting. Yeah. Parks well, we, we have not any schedule because there hasn't been any, any business. Right. So. Parks and Rec? Uh, no meetings. There is some ongoing work that's pending on the uh, joint use agreement, yes. I think, isn't there? From Our chair has been working on that, yeah. Dr. Kyle, yeah. The, that the, will be, actually, it's been approved by the school board, the draft. Yeah. So it'll be to your Parks and Rec Committee for their approval with recommendation to Council at your yeah. next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Now I can report that there will be a wrap-up meeting held tomorrow here at 5 o'clock on the powwow. That's going to conflict with some of Councillor Creed's uh, other committee assignments. So uh, hopefully we'll have a, a seven or eight people that can come and uh, we can have some good dialogue on uh, the 2012 powwow. May I ask how uh, if you don't mind, do we have a budget uh, breakdown from the power? If you ask me this tomorrow, the answer is yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, we'll jump down to correspondence. Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the Federal Infrastructure Roundtables. Anybody have any comments, questions, or seeing none? Welcome, Wagon. Uh, Julia Redford has been the representative for Welcome Wagon, and uh, I think they've run her off her feet. She's worn out and so has stepped down. Anybody have any thoughts on someone that would take Welcome Wagon and run with it? Maybe think about that a little bit. Uh, now we have some correspondence from AUMA, and then from Mr. Bickman. AUMA, Mr. Mayor, is just, um, they had a glitch in their system for uploading of the resolutions for the upcoming convention, and so they're now fixed, and so if you go to the website, you'll be able to see an update on all of the resolutions. 
I can tell you that coming out of our meeting yesterday with mayors of Sterling and uh, Raymond, uh, McGrath mayor wasn't there, but his CAO was. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of thinking that the uh, rewrite of the Municipal Government Act is going to put terms at four years. Uh, I honestly think that's going to have a negative effect in rural Alberta. Uh, often there are not sufficient candidates running, and I think four years is going to worsen that. But that's just my opinion. So, What's the opinion of the others? Well, I think throughout the province, the larger municipalities want the, the four, four years. years. Now, Mr. Bickman's letter, he is uh, requesting to come to council to speak on the Queen Elizabeth... Uh, no? No, he's not requesting to come to council. It's just... Oh, just a, just a letter? Yep. Just a letter? Okay. That's All right. Sorry. If there's nominations for that. But we, we need okay. to nominate someone if someone is fitting the criteria. If you're interested, yeah. Okay, so that is about it area. for communication. Someone who has done something extraordinary in the um, Diamond Jubilee Medal. South Council. <laughs> so if anyone can think of anyone who might be deserving of such recognition, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. Oh, here it is. It's down here. So, all right. Okay, so we have the luncheon at 1 o'clock tomorrow at Athens. We have approximately half of the Tribal Council coming for this, uh, just to a, just a get together. No real formal agenda. Uh, I don't plan on asking anybody to air any concerns or because uh, we haven't even ever met with them before, so this will be just a very casual. Could we maybe... Uh do a little bit of recognition for the financial support for power. And That's that, actually a very positive move. And that will happen. That will happen for sure. I think it's a good thing that we're meeting with them. And we've we've been we've we've been trying to do this sort of thing for what, Mary, in four and a half years. So this is good. This is a good step. And the intent really is that around town or if you're in Lethbridge and, and you're into some of these uh, folks who serve on the Tribal Council, you can at least acknowledge them, greet them, and if the, you know, if the spirit moves, you engage in a little bit of casual conversation. Uh, it was nice to have, what, three of them yeah. on the at the parade. Yeah. There's Councillor Gladstone, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bull Calf, Andrew Bullcalf, Andrew Bullcalf yeah. and I think Josh Curley right there, Curley was he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Bullcalf came to the luncheon with his wife. And uh, so yeah, that's. That's very nice to talk with them. That's nice. So I'll take another motion. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Councillor Cronin moves to adjourn. We are adjourned. Do well, you know the names of all the other councillors uh, on there? Just um, Thursday night at the Mayfield. Ira Tailfeathers. Yeah, I know Ira. Sheldon Day Chief. Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon. Dexter yeah. Bruisedhead. Yeah.